the NBA's all-time career leader in assists and steals, John Stockton was a pass-first point guard known for his court vision, toughness, and durability during his 19 seasons in Utah. He was a key member of the Jazz team that reached back-to-back -back NBA Finals in the late 90s. Stockton left to right, over to Carl Malone, 50 foot of the base, yes, Stockton to Malone! Stockton, dive, hang it up, it's good! I always tell everybody, man, people always ask me, who was the toughest player that I play against? And I always say John Stockton, and they say, why? I don't get that, why not Michael Jordan? I would always tell them, a guy who only plays 32 minutes or 33 minutes, which uh, Jerry Sloan had in his rotation, when a guy who gets on the floor, who only shoots the ball 10 times, makes eight, has 16 assists, fool around and has six or seven rebounds, and four or five steals, and you look at his stats, and you say, hmm, what did he have? 24, 16, 7, and 4. How can you beat that? Stockton fires down on the line. Short of 10 seconds. He fires the three. When you played against him, you had to outthink him. It's like chess playing against him. You know, it wasn't like you're going out there, who's going to be the quickest? No, this is chess. This is a long 48 minute game that you had to think about every move, every possession you had to make. Stockton steals. There it is. Stockton stole the ball. Stockton stole the ball. He's the all time leader in the history of the game. What a player. They're on their feet. It's celebration for John Stockton. If you were starting a franchise today, who's your number one pick out of all the players in the NBA? Well, I'll tell you, you won't believe this, but I like Johnny Stockton. I think he's the most complete person in his position. The point guards have taken over the game. The little guy. I mean, obviously, the, the greatest assist man ever to play in the game. Uh, John was just boom, boom. Hit you right here where you need to catch it. You knock it in. And he was very simple. He simplified. And that's why Jerry Sloan loved him. He grabbed Stockton uh, out of Gonzaga. I mean, it was huge. Nobody knew who Stockton was. Uh, but you immediately knew because they had a guy on that team, Ricky Green, who was a very good point guard at the time. And John Stockton eventually moved him out. And nobody really foresaw that happen. There it is. NBA all-time assist leader. They were going to make sure the record happened. It wasn't me. And there were some unbelievable shots tonight that I won't soon forget. Dogged by Legler. Oh my, this could be a four point play. Here's Stockton going up. Can you believe that? I do not believe it. The Lakers He's work. been doing it all night. Yeah. I hated John Stockton. He's probably the guy who I hated guarding the most because most guys you guard, you're trying to stop from scoring. With John, you had to try to stop him from passing. And the other thing that he probably was the best I have ever seen, even to this day, best screening guard in the history of our game. I, we, we see all the records with the assists and the steals, and, and that stuff was incredible and his longevity. But he had a mean streak in him, and that guy would deliver blows with his ability to set screens unlike anybody you've ever seen. The thing that I always remember about Stockton, I don't know how many, I think I played like two years against him before he retired. The first three, four years, me, I'm like jacked. I'm strong. I'm like, nah, ain't nobody like, John Stockton might have been one of the strongest dudes. He set a back screen on me one time, and you couldn't have told me it wasn't Carl Malone or somebody setting that screen. He set the hardest screens I had ever witnessed to that point. And... I could, like, for real, one time he said, he, he rung my bell, I was like, oh, I got up like this was, John Stockton just hit me like this? Like, what? I was like, yo, this dude is the strongest little dude ever. He should have stayed with him. He should have stayed with him, Bob. Nobody ever said he couldn't hit a big shot. He was the clutch player. I mean, he was, I, I remember watching a game where they were playing Houston, I think, to, to get to the finals. They were inbounding the ball on, on the right side of the floor, I think was right in front of the Houston bench. Drexler, Barkley uh, got caught up in the switch. They were supposed to switch the play, and Barkley was late on the switch stepping back, and Stockton knocks down a three. Russell will inbound at half court. Uh -oh. Stockton, open three, hit it! John Stockton sends the Utah Jazz to the NBA Finals. 
he made every big shot. He made every big free throw. And, you know, he was, he, he was the guy. Coach convinced us that we weren't out of it and just to keep playing and something good can happen if you keep playing hard. So I don't know if I can describe it. It was tremendous feeling. Well, when you think of John Stockton, you automatically think of assists and steals, obviously, but you had to play against him with all those great Utah teams. What do you remember? How tough he was, how competitive he was, and how relentless. They ran a cross-screen play for Carl Malone, where John Stockton would, would hit, swing it to the wing, and he'd make that UCLA cutoff, and he set that cross-screen. And me guarding Carl Malone, John would always set the pick, and you knew the play was coming when they ran auto. So you knew this pick was coming, and John would try to get body to body on those screens and pick you off. So what I started doing, and what teams, guys started doing, is getting big with their elbows. And when John would come set that screen, we start moving, and we would try to purposely hit him from his chest up to his neck to punish him, to stop him from setting those screens. But in all the years that I've hit him, Matt, from setting those screens, one, mm. he never stopped setting them. Two, he set them even harder. And three, he never complained because he understood that was part of the game. He understood as a defender guarding Carl Malone, I had to do what I had to do to get over that screen. And as a guy setting the screen to get Carl open, he had to do what he had to do and take that punishment. You know, from the outside, you watch those great jazz teams and the offense they ran, and you think of John Stockton, you certainly think of his vision and his playmaking, his ability to shoot the basketball. But I've heard from so many players of that era how physically strong he was for his size. Yeah, man. You know, back then, you could hand check. And he and Derek Harper had that vice grip claw. And when they would put that hand on young guys, they would steer them and, and, and move them in a direction in the places on the court they wanted them to go. And John Stockton was so good at it, that what made him a great defender because he was so strong, he could move you and just give you that little nudge to get you off balance, to keep you from going where you want to go. And then his ability to make big shots. You know, he understood that, the, that they had to get the ball to Carl Malone and other guys. But in the fourth quarter, when Carl was getting doubled and they kick it out to John, he faked that swing pass from the top and started knocking down shots up there. So he was a timely shooter, a tough defender, and then just a great facilitator. Hardly ever heard a peep from the guy during his career, but by the end of a game... He and, never said anything on the floor either. And the end of his career, you certainly knew John Stockton had been around. Stockton looking at the clock. Seven seconds, six, five. Stockton drives, put it up. It's good. Stockton, John Stockton, unbelievable. John Stockton taught me how to also be a champion indirectly. Because playing against him at the point guard position, every possession you had to concentrate. What happens when you play in a regular season game, you play a guy like Stockton, then you have four or five games where there's no one like him. But when you play a seven game series, and you have to play against him every day, you start to concentrate on a level that just keeps your intensity up for the next series. So all of a sudden, when you go into the next series or the series next year, you're so much more in tune based off the fact of playing against a guy like him. He just kept my concentration level up so high because you had to do it playing against him.